Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck Kincone. My guest today is Susan Eisenhower, who will identify you as president of the Eisenhower Group and chairman of leadership and public policy at the Eisenhower Institute. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Chuck. There's a lot more. We, we don't have time to do all we can introduce you being an author in that. But I want to talk to you today about the Eisenhower Memorial that has been proposed. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I guess your brother was on the board and he resigned from it and you have spoken out. So the family doesn't like it. Why? Well, I think first of all, the, the language of the memorial is, is confused and uh, the theme uh, is probably really not a reflection of Eisenhower's accomplishments at all. Uh, the theme is of a, a young boy mm -hmm. um, who is looking at his future career and these very large metal screens behind depict a landscape of Kansas. Well, now I think you have said somewhere that there is a monument to him as a young boy in yes. Kansas, but what in a way is wrong with that even here because in some ways aren't we all the little boy or the little girl from wherever? Well, I'm, I, I think it's a very romantic uh, idea, the, but the truth of the matter is he's not been given this honor to have a memorial on the mall because he was a young boy who uh, dreamed about his future. He's there because he liberated Europe uh, and he was the leader of the free world against tyranny. This is a little bit different uh, than being a barefoot boy from Abilene, Kansas. But you know, the, the monument is built by Frank Gehry, who of course is controversial for the sweeping kind of structures that we did in Bilbo, Spain and various other right. places. Does, what is your feeling about the way the monument is put together, the way it looks. It's a very odd structure. It'd be very different to anything else in Washington. Well, it'd be very different. I think the other thing is most people don't realize the scale of this. These uh, woven uh, metal curtains, um, some critics have called them iron curtains. <laughs> well, that was during uh, yeah, this period, yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they're 80 feet tall. Uh, this is the size of um, uh, an eight-story office building. And these very, very large round cylinders uh, are also 80 feet tall. This is a very, uh, it'll be a very dwarfing experience um, for visitors. Um, and some critics, and I think have rightly said so, uh, you know, will diminish uh, the honoree um, in a way that uh, seems inappropriate given his accomplishments. Yes, this was, as you know, your grandfather was led the forces in Europe and the liberation of Europe and then became president of the States for two terms in a rather controversial period. But what kind of memorial would you want? Do you want a, a bronze statue or, or what? I think something simple and welcoming. Uh, I was uh, speaking uh, this morning to a person who was born in a, uh, uh, a camp after World War II for displaced persons. And uh, he was saying that uh, Eisenhower is about freedom. Uh, his parents had uh, been at Bergen-Belsen, and uh, it was a very moving story, told me, but he, uh, he like me, is uh, deeply concerned that the emphasis is on some romantic notion about uh, ambition and a future career. I don't think my grandfather dreamed, had, could ever even imagine his wildest dreams, uh, that he would end up witnessing firsthand and fighting against the horrors that existed in Europe at the time. So this is a sobering, uh, this is a sobering subject. These accomplishments were uh, achieved during uh, some of the most tumultuous moments of the 21st century, and we shouldn't uh, talk down to people. We should we should talk about what happened in those times. Well, I understand you're going to testify before Congress about this, and the family is strongly opposed. Particularly, your father is strongly opposed. Uh, who is? I guess he's the last living. Son of well, he's, he was uh, um, my grandfather's only, my grandparents' only surviving son. Uh, his older brother died at the age of three, so my father was, in effect, an only child. And um, my generation are all of his children, of course. There are four of us. And so we're a small, tight-knit family. And on this issue, we're on exactly the same page. What are you doing to, to, to fight this moment? Well, we're trying to, first of all, raise awareness. There's been an enormous amount written on this subject now. Um, in November of 2011, nobody even knew this thing was uh, on a fast track uh, to be approved. Uh, and I think whenever uh, a memorial is involved, it really is an expression of our collective memory. And this is an issue that every American uh, not only uh, has a right to weigh in on, but should weigh in on it if 
if an individual cares. Um, it's uh, something we're going to be living with for centuries, and so it's important we get this right. And you'll be, t you'll be doing it. Will, will the family be doing others? I mean, we're just going to have to quit here very quickly, but what will the family do specifically to try to make this work for, in the way you want it to work? Well, I, I think it, it looks almost inevitable that there's going to need to be a redesign. Um, and I don't, you know, a redesign we shouldn't be afraid of. Um, most of these wonderful memorials I see um, behind you, Chuck, uh, were redesigned. There's a marvelous exhibition uh, at the uh, Building Museum, National Building Museum, called Unbuilt Washington, which is uh, an exhibition of all of the designs that were never materialized. And so um, there's a long You're history of many tries at getting something right. You're hoping that happens here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Susan, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. This is Susan thank Eisenhower you. with me today. I'm Chuck and Coney, and this has been Focus Washington.